We've got Barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Good night, Jared. How are you doing today? I have no complaints. Um, we got some chaos. Not a lot of chaos, but some quality chaos. Some some Pac-12 flavored chaos this week. Um, we had some close calls elsewhere, but uh, mostly mostly uh, some some Pac-12 flavored chaos. Uh, where do you want to start today, Kyle? Oh, I guess we'll just we'll just go down the we'll go down the list here, Jared. Uh, I know there are some big important ones uh, we should talk about first, but we'll we'll go down the list that you have here, Jared. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess first, I get yeah, yeah. It is, it is a team chaos because uh, Vanderbilt no. got their no. <laughs> got their first no, win. Okay. No, it isn't. Look, we uh, can we can all now super duper officially stop pretending that Kentucky's good. Yeah. Right. We like. If the first loss didn't do it, if the second loss didn't do it, if the third loss didn't do it, let their fourth loss of the year against Vanderbilt be evidence that no, Kentucky isn't a good football team. Agreed. We can all we all we can all stop pretending now. It's okay. All right. What about Notre Dame? Notre Dame escapes beating Navy 35 to 32. I don't know. I was about to say in Notre Dame's defense, but I don't know if this is in defense or not. Um, they had this game totally under control. They had this game totally under control and then Navy came back um, and then Navy performed what was one of the absolute worst onside kick attempts I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, yeah. But yeah, Navy did a hell of a job making this interesting again. Um because again, like Notre Dame had this, I think they were up like 35 to 10 or something fairly late in the game. And like Navy's not a team that's equipped to come back late. Um, but they did it and Notre Dame let them. All right. Uh, next game here, Tennessee uh, decides to play football in the second half. Yeah. For the second quarter, I forget when it exactly was, but uh, it, it was a close game. But then Tennessee decided to start playing and ended up just demolishing uh, Missouri 66 to 24. That happens, especially, you know, you come right off of a huge game like Tennessee did against Georgia. You come out a bit flat when you're playing a team like Mizzou. It happens. Yeah. 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 It was 28-17 at halftime, and then, and then Tennessee scored, what was that, 38 points in the second half. Now, this, this next one, this next one was this no excuses here. No excuses for LSU escaping Arkansas 13-10. to No excuses for this one. No, Arkansas is bad. Let's like bad. Yeah. Um, they're now five and five hangover game. Spike says. Maybe. I don't know, but Arkansas, Jared, Arkansas is pretty bad. Remember they had speaking of teams that had them high ranked. There was a point. There was a point in the season when Arkansas was ranked 10th. That there was a point in time in the season where Notre Dame was ranked fifth. Like we can we can play that game if you want to play that game. Okay, to um, be fair with and Notre it, hold Dame, on, though, real, real they, quick they're, to they're actually they're actually not as bad as what they were at the beginning of the year. But these teams like Kentucky and Arkansas are actually worse than what they actually were in the beginning of the year. It's it's a complete difference. Yeah. And by the way, like I'm willing to say uh, Tennessee had a bit of a, just Respite, responding to spikes again it's one thing for me to say tennessee had a hangover because they eventually took the game over right they eventually i you know you, you give tennessee a total pass on the game not looking totally dominant right away and then eventually you know the talent and the depth of the roster eventually takes over as what happens with college football um, but when that doesn't happen, then, you know, you kind of don't get a pass. Yeah. 
Of course, all of these SEC teams are heading into their cupcake week next week. So, yeah, maybe maybe we'll we'll get some super chaos. Was was LSU overlooking this game here? Like neither team just overlooking because they're preparing for who next week? (laughs) No one. No one. It's cupcake week in the SEC, baby. What you talking about? God. Daniels only threw for 86 yards in this game. He's, he's not no, much of a and thrower. No, and, and no, it wasn't raining with 50 mile an hour winds either, Jared. No, it was not. Although I, I do hear it was slightly cold by Southern standards. Uh, what was, where, where was it? Temperature? Where was the temperature? I think here? it was like in the 50s. Oh boy. Oh no. Reminds me of that bowl game down in Miami when the hurricanes were all bundled up and the Wisconsin players on the other end were jumping up just short sleeves and all that. In Tampa Bay, no less. Yeah. All right. Uh, Purdue. Purdue beats Illinois 31 to 24. Kyle, can we now stop pretending that Illinois is good? <laughs> who, who, who thought Illinois was good? That's a good, that's a fair question. Uh, they, they're, they've to this point largely just been running through a bad Big Ten West, and good God, is the Big Ten West bad? It's yeah, so they're, bad. They're, they're, they're going to lose a third in a row here. They they lost to Sparty. Now hey, they lost to hey, Purdue. You don't say that on this podcast. Do not hand Michigan a win on this podcast. You don't know, Illinois you don't could, know what the Illinois, birds have up their sleeves. <clears throat> Illinois could lose their third game. <laughs> Thank you. Do we have an early line on that one? And by the way, we might need to talk about what the hell's happening in the SEC West right now. Three team. Is it a three team tie? 17 Illinois is the 17 point dog in that game. <clears throat> you you wish it was a three way tie, Jared. Is it a four way? It is a four way baby. <laughs> Purdue, yeah. Illinois, Iowa, and Minnesota, which I believe Purdue has the tiebreaker. Based on what? Because all of those teams have beat the other teams somehow, some way. Do we need to look up the Big Ten? Uh, uh, Austin, are you still on. around? Hold on. Austin, Hold what, on. Are, what are the um, Big Ten tiebreaking rules? Oh, God. Hold on. Oh, God. Who is Iowa? Lost to Iowa, lost to Illinois. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, guys, no, I don't, I don't care. Know. I don't know. Ooh, we're gonna have to. Have to you know what? That one out. Do, but not right now. We, but not right now. No, not on the podcast. Not on the podcast. Because as Austin astutely pointed out, he doesn't care. <laughs> and if he doesn't care, I don't think anyone else does. And quite frankly, I'm already losing interest in it. What's the next game? Louisville and Clemson. I thought this was going to be a little bit closer. So, I mean, uh, I, I guess hats off to Clemson for pulling out the win here. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, hello, Buckeye Esquire. That's it? That's it, maybe? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. It, DJ, I mean, DJ, Louis- DJ still, like, he was okay in this game. He, he was okay. I don't think it was anything spectacular. He was, what? 19 for 27, 185 yards and a touchdown. And but, he, but, tried, but, he tried to rush it 15 times and only got 32 yards here. But, just... but, but, but Kyle, I'm being told that he's going to be the quarterback, the starting quarterback at Ohio State next year. Stop it. Stop it. If, any, if, anyone, if anyone tells right, you yeah. that, if anyone tells yeah. you that, I'm giving you permission. And Buckeye Esquire, uh, this, is, um, this is parody. Um, this is clearly no reasonable person would actually take this as an, as a legal permission. No, 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 no. I need, I need you to listen, Buckeye Esquire. I'm saying that no reasonable person would actually, um, would, would actually interpret what I'm about to say as an actual call to action. It's not, that's not what a reasonable person, reasonable person would do. If anyone tells you that DJ Uyunglele is going to transfer to Ohio State and become the starting quarterback next year, feel free to slap them in the face. Yes, please. But once again, not, no reasonable person would actually take that as actual permission, as I do not have the authority to grant such permission. Mm-hmm. 
All right, moving on. Uh, Nebraska. Uh, Throttled. Nebraska doing Nebraska things. <laughs> Michigan moving. doing Michigan things, if we're being fair. Yeah. Jared uh, knows the proper verbiage for the standard <laughs> for the standard of review for this incitement. And he respects that. And I appreciate that. Right. Michigan beats Nebraska 34 to three. I mean, Nebraska is already a bad team here, but I mean, you, you, you got to really start paying attention to what Michigan's doing here. They held Nebraska. Be yes. Nebraska is a really bad team, but they held them to under 150 yards of total offense. That's, that's crazy. That's they crazy. ran Corum like 20 times in the first half. Hats off to Corum and his trainers and the trainers at Michigan for keeping him healthy. Yeah. They, they're they running him until the wheels fall off, which. They're one. They might do because because J.J. McCarthy didn't look all that great either. Eight, he was under 50 percent uh, completion in this game for 129 yards and two touchdowns. He did not. He did not look good in this game. Yeah, I'm just. I do Michigan, not. Michigan has become a one-dimensional offense now. JJ McCarthy, and maybe it's because of his injury, and maybe it's not. JJ McCarthy can't throw the ball down the field with any sort of anything. He's just. He's not. He can't throw the ball more than ten yards down the field with any high level of accuracy, right? Um. So they are very one dimensional. Ohio, this, this will be a Cody Simon game. This will be a game where you need to have three linebackers on the field. Um, why don't they bitch about that kind of one sided the way we do with a passing team? Maybe they do. I don't spend much time on Michigan yeah. forums. Um, maybe they do. All right. Moving and on. And also, their standards are lower. If we're being yeah. honest, I meant the national media. Does the national media complain about Ohio State being one sided? No. I think that's no. just coming from Ohio State fans. Yeah. No, they and Desmond haven't. Howard. But who gives a fuck what Desmond Howard has to say about anything? Yeah, let's let's please let's please just ignore the. Just ignore that guy. He's he's an attention whore. He wants the attention, and the more attention you get, you're just feeling him. Just everybody, just ignore what he says and just move on with your. Or lives. feeding him. All right. Um, NC State losing to Boston College. Did not see this one coming. I, I thought NC State would have had this in hand here, but man, yeah, NC State. Just. I mean, what what do you expect when you have uh, Tim Beck as your offensive coordinator, and also, and also that you don't have your starting uh, quarterback as well, and that really hurts your offense too. It's is yeah. what it is for NC State here. Yeah, the we were talking about uh, someone who was in the social screen. Remind me. Who are we talking about? A team that's like a slightly above 500 team that's playing way better than that because they happen to have a really good quarterback. Who the hell was I talking about? Wake Forest? Yeah, mm -hmm. Wake Forest. Oh, wow. Look at this stat, Jared. You ready Hold on. This stat? Let me finish. Let me finish that thought. Wake Forest is like a 500 football team. Yep. But because Hartman's such a good quarterback, they're just playing above that right now. And that's who NC State was but they don't have their quarterback anymore. So now they're just back to being NC state again. Same thing with Pittsburgh last year versus this year. Boston college had 23 rushing attempts for negative one yard. Wow. And they won this game. That's a rarity. That's, that's a, that is a statistical outlier. All right. Uh, next, Kyle. <laughs> Penn State. This is another. Yeah, Penn State. Uh, we mentioned this earlier. Penn State beating Maryland thirty to nothing. Well, actually, we mentioned this in Monday's episode at the end there. Thirty to nothing there. Mar and Ohio State playing Maryland uh, this weekend, and early early odds have Ohio State as a twenty five point favorite here. And you see this score here. Yeah, you got you got to be thinking about taking the over, right, Jared? 
Why, why, why are you always doing this to me with the over? <laughs> you take Ohio State with the points. He does it, guys. He does it just to piss me off. I do. I do. <laughs> you take Ohio State with the points next week, especially if you can get that 25 number, because I have a feeling it's not going to stay so speak, there. So speaking of like Michigan holding Nebraska to under 150 yards, Penn State did the same with Maryland, held Maryland to un- 134 offensive yards in this game. Insane. Absolutely insane. Uh, what, al- what also was insane was Alabama almost losing <laughs> to uh, Mississippi State. They end up nope. winning 30 to just, 24. Just Mississippi. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. Mississippi State. That's Oof. all right. Ole Miss, yeah. Ole Miss almost beating Alabama. 30 I mean, to 24. This is one of the better Ole Miss teams we've seen in a while. This is one of the worse Alabama teams we've seen in a while. Alabama still wins because even when Alabama is bad, they're not bad, bad. They're just Alabama bad. (laughs) Yeah. Alabama bad is still like a top 10 team. Got it. And ter- terrible play calling towards the <laughs> Zach end. Zach says the era of Saban into. is done. God, I wish I had your confidence. I, yeah, I, such, I get it. He's he's an old terrible play calling at the end of that game too. Like you call that you yeah. call a timeout, and that's your that's your best play there, Lane Kiffin. That that was your best play, really. Yeah. When you're right, you're right, and Kyle, you're right. All right. Uh, let's see. UCF beats Tulane 38 to 31. Congratulations UCF. Uh they right. will now take the they'll now take the crown as the top group of 5 team. Um we'll see where the committee puts them and maybe they can get into a new year six bowl. Mm-hmm. All right, uh Kansas State beats Baylor uh convincingly 31 to 3. I thought this was going to be a lot closer game here. I don't know. What what was it? It was at Baylor by a three was a three point favorite, but only ended up putting up three points in this game. Yeah, I, I don't I never. Yeah, it, that always felt like a weird line. Um, Austin says uh, in regards to Tulane and UCF that they're set up for a rematch in the conference championship game. Winner gets a New Year's Six Bowl. Not necessarily. Um. He also says that Kansas State and TCU having a rematch for the Big 12 title is likely, which is fun. Yeah. Um, By the way, like they only have to put a group of six team in a New Year's Six Bowl. I think it the number is 15. If they're ranked in the top. I want to say it's 15. Incorrect. Can I don't remember. Yeah, highest, highest G5, G5 auto player. build, no matter what. When did they change that? I think they changed that recently. I can't remember. Always has been. No, that is not true. Yeah, it has not always been that case. Since the college football playoff? We'll we'll, we'll figure this out later. All right. Uh, maybe I'm thinking... Georgia- maybe I'm thinking yep. of uh, old BCS stuff. Maybe I'm thinking of BCS stuff. All right, uh, Georgia beating He's saying it very State. empathetically. Georgia That's beating true. Mississippi State uh, 45 to 19. It was a 17 to 12 game at halftime, and Georgia just. Yeah. I mean, it, Georgia is like so good on, on defense when, when they really put their mind to that. They just stopped Mississippi State. Like, it's it's crazy how how good this Georgia defense is, with with all the talent that they lost last year and and what they're able to do this year. So, yeah, um, just another just another good win for Georgia. I I I agree. Georgia concerns. I I actually think Ohio State's a better football team than Georgia. Like when in doubt, pick the quarterback, and I'll I'll take Stroud every day over Stenson Bennett. But I do worry about like, and again, I think I said this during the social screen as well. I worry about Georgia from a 
from a matchup standpoint with Ohio State in the same way that I worry about Ohio State and Michigan from a matchup standpoint for Ohio State, as I do believe Georgia is basically just Michigan on steroids, right? Like, metaphorically speaking, in case that's not clear. They're just Michigan leveled up. And so I do worry about that from a matchup standpoint for Ohio State, should the playoffs be in their future. Yep, yep. All right. Um, let's see here. Moving on to Washington. Yeah, th- this is this is a pretty big um team chaos here. Washington yep. defeats Oregon 37 to 34. Yeah. Um when it came down to it, Penix was just up and ready and was just too hard to beat. Uh, it was just like in, in, a, in a game in which someone had to score last. Penix got in there and scored. Jared, no, don't 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 act like you're too good for this. Don't act like you're too good for this, Austin. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, very that, stiff that, competition spikes. That, very stiff. That third quarter was just like, like when the the game was. It was a thirteen to ten halftime game. We, we were all thinking oh, this should have been a lot higher score game. Well, <laughs> then the third quarter happened when there was thirty five points scored in it. <laughs> it was just a back and forth ordeal. It was actually pretty entertaining to watch, and then. Yeah, Washington just ended up making more plays um, in that fourth quarter there. Yes. Everyone read the chat. Um, Wake falls to North Carolina. This is as I as I promised on the Friday Sloop Picks episode. This this was a great quarterback game. I like both of these quarterbacks a lot. Um, North Carolina ends up winning it. Uh, this game felt a lot like the uh, East Coast version of the Washington Oregon game. Just one of the teams was going to score last. It happened to be UNC, a last second, or not a last second, but a late interception uh, set North Carolina up for the win. Um, that's 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 really about it. Yeah, I wanted to go back to Oregon real quick. So right now in the in the Pac-12, because Pac-12. Yeah. Um, doesn't have divisions, which uh, Big Ten. Uh, We're also do not done soon. talking about the Pac-12 and and upsets. Do that soon. Uh, <laughs> right now, it is a three-way tie. Well, uh, not right, not really a tie because USC has played one more conference game. So if USC beats uh, UCLA, which more on UCLA soon, they they get the top seed or they, they get an automatic to the Pac-12 championship game, and it's going to be down to this weekend's game of Oregon and Utah. Whoever wins that game is pretty much going to be the one that's um, going to get that second spot in the Pac-12 championship. Yeah. All right. Um, well, let's we'll, we'll, we'll get forward, and we'll talk about UCLA real quick here then, Jared. UCLA losing 34-28 to Arizona. Four and six, Arizona. I did not watch this game because this was no. a a classic uh, Pac-12 after dark game. I, I watched some of the beginning of this game, but I'm an old man and I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna just gonna look look at the uh, the stats real quick here. A- Arizona uh, was a 20, do- 20 point dog in this game, uh, yep. and then they turn around, win it by a touchdown. Uh, this is just a huge. A huge letdown for Chip Kelly and UCLA um, in a season that, you know, was supposed to be, you know, Chip Kelly has been there a while now. Um, it's not gone great. It seems like they're finally getting things going. And you, you kind of just don't go from a 500 team to a New Year's Day six team overnight in one season. So kind of never expected them to finish the season like in the top 10 or top 12, but didn't expect them to lose to Arizona. Maybe they, Kyle, were looking ahead to USC next week. Maybe. 
I think the key stat here, I'm just looking looking here. UCLA was two for five on fourth downs. Maybe, I wonder when this was. happened. Yeah, not sure, but Oregon, by the it, way, had a couple brain dead. And I think I yeah. maybe ended up costing them a game, costing them that game. Yes. I Choices think to go for it on fourth down. Like inside their own 30 yard line on two separate occasions, they got one of them. They didn't get the other one. And it, it very well may have cost them. TCU and Texas. Kyle, this was a defensive struggle. I know. In the Big 12? <laughs> I was about to say, uh, pick the over. The the un, the over under was 65. 65, and it was only 27 points scored in this game. Yeah. Um, everyone's... Ribbit, ribbit, please. <laughs> everyone's uh, favorite Wonder Boy, Quinn Ewers, um, not looking like the future 1 1 NFL draft pick that everyone was expecting him to be. Um, he, he's, he's not seen a pass he's not willing to overthrow. Um, uh, he's, he's not putting it together. He's, yeah, you 17, know, 17 he's still, he was injured. He's still pretty young in his in career. It. I'm not trying to bury him or anything, but it's not looking good so far. No. All right. And the last game here, Utah defeats Stanford 42 to seven. Yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. All right, Jared, let's pull up, let's pull up the screen here and let's get our new week. 10 week 11 week 11 it should be yeah i will, I will. week 11 um tier list all right all right chat um, and chat what what where, where do you guys think we need to address things first what obvious changes need to be made i feel like asking the chat move ucla, UCLA goes yeah. down to b tier yeah, and I, and I think they just fall to B. They don't need to fall any further yeah, than very, that. Very end of very end of, of B. Very end. Ole of Miss B. as well. Ole Miss. Ole Miss as well. How many Oregon? losses does Ole Miss have? That is that is number two for them. Okay. I'm just looking here real quick. All right. Um, Oregon. All right, Oregon. Oregon goes down as as well. Yep. Kyle, we're almost out of one loss teams. Uh, we still have Clemson hanging down there in the B tier. Uh, you, you almost want to put Clemson back in A tier, but I am not ready for that. <laughs> Kyle, they're one of five. One loss teams. Um, well, hold on. Yeah. Six, because we now can move UCF up. You want to move Coastal Carolina, who only has one loss? Not especially. I don't okay. even. Know, I don't even think I have a Coastal Carolina logo on the board. Utah for an A filler. We don't do fillers in A. You have to. Texas in M tier now, Zach says. I think that's I think that's a proper call. I think that is a good proper call. Kyle, do you agree? Yep. And then Illinois, you can just move to the right with the rest of the gang there. Hold on. To the right. Should they, they they can go to the they can go with everybody else. We have to keep track of the Big Ten West, maybe. Uh we'll put we, them over there. Do, do we? we? Do we? I don't think we do. UCF has two losses. Excuse me, not UCF. Oh no, UCF does have two losses. They uh, do. Yeah. Never mind. I got confused. It was Tulane that would have yeah, jumped put UCF up. UCF out of B. UCF doesn't belong in B. My opinion. I might leave them in B. UCF lost to Eastern Carolina. If that's the case, if you're putting two lost teams in there, then you're almost no, stays no. there, then you got to put in Washington. Right. You got to right. put in Washington in B tier. 
they they, right. they got that big win over Oregon. I'm not. I'm not. They have two I, I'm losses. Not against this. I'm not They're, against this. They have two losses there. UNC possibly to A. They did beat a ranked Sam Hartman. Um, I put I'm, Penn State. I put Penn State in B tier as well. And I know their schedule. I know their schedule hasn't shown it. Kentucky to M. No, Kentucky's Kentucky's always I'm, been I'm, bad. I'm, like no, I wouldn't even okay just. It. They don't even deserve it. Is what you're saying? No, no. Yeah, I know they lost to Vandy, but they lost to Vandy, and that was Vandy's first win in 36 SEC competitions. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think those are like all the two lost yeah those are all the like the two lost teams that i care about putting putting in there but as far as um, if, to move yeah. anybody in a tier I, I don't think so i think this is pretty much these seven teams are pretty much going to be your teams who are going to make the playoffs do we move who, up clemson SMA? and north carolina based purely on the fact that they have one loss and they're in a big boy conference. I mean, you're allowed to say no to that and chat. I want your feedback on that as well. Clemson and North Carolina. Should they how be in a tier? How many wins over? Hold on. How many wins? Hold on. In Clemson, how many wins over current? top 25 teams does Clemson have? I, my assumption would be zero. The answer is zero. The same with uh, UNC. Wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, well, Wake, I mean, I, I guess they knocked Wake. Oh, no, Wake was not ranked. Yeah, Wake's um, not ranked now. NC State is not ranked now. Um, Syracuse is not ranked. Yeah, they they their schedule is horrendous. And they and they had a really yeah, they had that really bad loss Kyle. to Notre Dame just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, no, they they stay in B tier. Florida State. Florida State. Clemson beat Florida, Florida State. State right? Yeah, just barely. Oh, yep, they have they have one. Okay, they have one. They have one. So okay. There is a top uh, twenty-five. They, they don't, they don't belong in A tier. No, they do not belong in A tier. Because are, are you? Can you? Can you sit here and say, "Oh, Clemson belongs into the same group that the same group of teams that has beaten Alabama, Alabama has beaten um, Ole Miss, um, that has also beaten." Um, Austin oh, says another, USC, LSU, and Clemson are on the same level. I don't agree. I, think, I do not agree. No. I think Clemson loses straight up to all three teams in the A tier, and I don't think any of those games are overly close. And I almost, and, and I'm going to give LSU a pass because it could have been a hangover from their win over Alabama there, but I... I almost wanted to put LSU in the B tier, but I'm going to give them the pass because of just they had a they had that um, hangover. But well, but yeah, Clem, you almost kind of want to forgive them for the Florida State loss. Um, it was week one. They had a lot. They had new coaching staff, new personnel. Um, kind of don't want to kill them for that. And the, like the, I just, the, they look like a. And of course, the Arkansas game doesn't help this argument, but they just look like a better team than than Clemson. Yeah, the, um, the difference is is the teams that LSU has recently beaten, Ole Miss and Alabama. Right. It's it's one of the best um, pair of wins to anybody right now. I I, th I think Georgia is probably the other team that you would look at that has probably that would have better. Um, wins. LSU has two losses. That has to matter. It matters. It matters. 
because without those two losses, they'd probably be in the S tier instead of TCU. It matters. Blasphemy. I, I know how you feel about TCU, Austin. Um, by the way, speaking of S tier, are we standing Pat up there? Yep. Yep. No changes. No changes here. I I agree. Um, oh, we've made Austin mad again. He wants TCU above Michigan. I'm not going to do it. No. I'm not going to do it. TCU's strength of schedule is so much better. Yeah, but they barely win games, whereas Michigan wins games convincingly. I'm sorry, I test matters. It's not just that you beat teams. Sometimes it's how you beat teams and when you beat teams. I would have an S plus tier just for Georgia and Ohio State. I mean, the idea here is that we're we're picking the four playoff yeah, teams. It, but I but I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. No, I think I think S and A tier. I'm, I I put my stamp for week eleven approval there. I think that's how that is. For the B tier, I I think that's fine too. Um, Utah, prob- not 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 in this order. Probably, maybe, in, maybe we in we this don't order, or, we don't order sure. B. I have no interest in trying yeah, to order but, B. But what what you have there, I I agree. I agree with the B tier. They they have a chance to make some splash, but I don't think any of those teams um, have a shot to make the S tier unless some complete chaos happens, and then maybe you can start talking about Clemson and you or UNC being put into the um into the mix there but right now unless some complete chaos happens nobody in the B tier would get into the uh the playoffs they would all need a ton of help L list to be honest and then, and then, and don't don't includes, don't be a sore like, don't 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 be that big of a TCU yeah. homeboy Austin yeah. Yeah, that would include like Michigan losing to Illinois, Ohio State losing to Maryland, Georgia losing to Kentucky, like those kind of losses. Yeah. Um, I'm just sort of reassessing C here a bit, setting up a bit of a new batter's box. Um, TC, TCU losing to Baylor this weekend. Another another loss that that um, if you're a UNC or Clemson fan would want to need to happen. Yeah. Um, looking over who's the it's Illinois it's Iowa. It's who are, who are the other teams in the big 10 West right now? It's not Wisconsin cause they lost, right? Uh, Purdue. Just, just trying to get our big 10 teams in order here. Oh God. That, Minnesota. That, that's, that's who I was forgetting. I was forgetting Minnesota. Purdue, Illinois, Iowa, and Minnesota. Anyone else belong with UCF, Kansas State, and Florida State as sort of just teams to have in the batter's box there? Am I forgetting anyone? Should someone else be up there? The batter's box for what? Just just this higher, just this higher area of C tier. That's all. Uh, Oklahoma State, Oregon State. There are three lost teams. Oklahoma State got demoted to M tier. All right. They they went on a three game slide. You what can't do the, that. What about the What about the Orange Beaver there? Make a case. Make a case. Make a case for that Orange Beaver. Uh, this Pac West schools. I can't. <laughs> win loss. Who's their best win? Who? What's their worst they are, loss? They are seven. They are seven and three. Their best win, Boise State or Cal, and they have losses to USC by three. They okay. lost by. They lost by, um, what was that eighteen points to Utah and three to or or three to Washington. Honestly, those are, those are some good losses. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if your I, I best win is Cal, you stay there. Yeah, I agree, Austin. Yeah. I agree. All right. No, I think this is good. I think I think we should lock this in. 
for our tier, for our tier list. And for those listening, we have Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, TCU in our S tier in that order. And are we sold A-tier. on the A tier yeah. rankings? Yes. yes, I I will I will fight you if you try to add anybody else. In, no, 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 our, no. I I mean the order. Oh, the order. Um, no, I like the order too. I like the okay. order. And then in A tier, we have uh, USC is our fifth, Tennessee sixth, and then LSU seventh. Okay. And then in the B tier, in no particular order, Utah, Bama, Clemson, UNC, UCLA, Ole Miss, Oregon, Washington, and Penn State. I think Clemson should be A tier because they have a chance to make the playoffs, to be honest. Austin, I was trying to make that case, but Kyle wasn't budging. So no, they, they need help. They need help. They need help to. I, I think a lot win. of teams in B tier could get in with enough help. So here, um, here's here's a here, here's the funny thing. Okay, they have. Well, not have any one, of the teams. They they have they have one win over a top twenty five team, which is Florida State right now. They play Miami, South Carolina, and then UNC to end the season. And then Clemson is going to have to play UNC a second time in a row. And let's just say Clemson beats UNC twice. Clemson or UNC then is going to have three losses and they're going to be unranked because of that. Yeah. And so Clemson's only win is over a top 25 team might be Florida state here. Their schedule is not going to look good. Florida state was a lot worse at the beginning of the year. If TCU lose, Austin says if TCU loses, Clemson probably no. gets in. Uh, they they put in Tennessee. They put before in Tennessee or LSU or before USC they put in different. Clemson. I think, um, and they put in USC as well. But USC is not going to win this three game. They're not going to win all of these. They have a um, they have USC gets into the playoffs if they win out, because yeah. this three game series that they have coming up is intense. UCLA, Notre Dame. And then most likely Oregon. Yeah. You win all three of those games, you get into the playoffs. That being said, they're not going to win all three of those games. So who cares? They're not going to do it. They're not that good. They're, they're not good enough to, to pull off three consecutive wins against those teams. So whatever. Um, oh, shit. I didn't realize this. If Utah wins out, even Utah plays Oregon this weekend and then Colorado, they actually get the top seed because they have the they have the, they would have the tiebreaker over um, USC. So Utah, <laughs> this top do we? I mean, top seed doesn't mean anything though, right? No, no. Uh, Caleb but Williams, so the, yeah. But so the, like... the victory, whoever wins Utah and Oregon, is pretty much going to be um, joining USC. Oh, did they not play it in Levi anymore? I did not know that, Austin. That's kind of oh, cool that they played it, 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 that they played at home. Oh, and here's another thing too. I know you talked about like USC having a tough schedule. I mean, Oregon has a tough schedule here. They, I mean, they just lost to Washington. They play Utah. They get playing Utah this week. Oregon, and then the last week, last week, their last regular season game, they play currently current ranked Oregon State, and then they would play like USC in the uh, Pac-12 championship. That that's a Not, tough slate for Oregon as well. Yeah, that that is a tough slate. Um, well, who's T, what's TCU's upcoming schedule? Do we think they get in? What what is the likelihood, Kyle? T- TCU wins out their end. I mean, they they're they have Baylor and then uh Iowa State. And then look looks like most likely Kansas State then. Yeah. I think it's, it's Kansas Ky- State. Kansas State plays West Virginia and Kansas. Yeah. Yeah. Um that is a tough upcoming schedule, but it's achievable. Um, that is the likeliest scenario to you right now. KSU will win the Big 12 title. It 
Ohio State, Georgia, Tennessee, TCU. I I don't I don't know that I don't know that Tennessee is as much of an automatic in as you think they are, Austin. Um and I say that based mostly off of the fact that they lost so handedly to Georgia. Had that been a close game? I think uh, I think Michigan or Ohio State, if that game like ends in overtime and then the winner goes on to win the Big Ten, which they should, the Big 12 or the Big Ten East is or West. God, the Big 12. Ooh, the Big Ten West is terrible. We've said it a million times, but if that losing team is OSU, there's a case. Yeah. If it's Michigan, no shot. I wouldn't say no shot. I I think if if Ohio State beats Michigan in I, overtime, I agree, Austin. I agree with you, Austin. I think if Ohio State beats Michigan like in overtime by a field goal, I think that Michigan team gets in ahead of Tennessee, and I know that Tennessee has a better a better lineup of wins. Like they have a better resume f- from a like who did you beat standpoint. I 100% acknowledge that. But I think like Michigan can sit there and say we never lost in regulation. Whereas Tennessee was not even in competition with Georgia. And I think that matters. I think that matters. They'll both be one losses. Neither of them will be conference champions. Neither of them would even have played for their conference championship. Yeah. I th- All right, Jared. It's a toss up. I acknowledge it's a toss up and I'm not saying. Unlike you. See, here's the thing, Austin and Kyle. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm saying. You shouldn't you shouldn't be so sure that you're right. Does that make sense? I feel like there's an just having fun with it, Jared. I understand. Of course. So am I. But we're taking this seriously, guys. But isn't isn't that what the show is? Me taking everything super seriously and you guys making fun of me for it. Isn't isn't that what we do here? Are are you finally? um, Oh, 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 Kyle, Kyle pulled that punch. All right, let's go into some uh, Ask Slipcast questions here, shall we? <clears throat> uh, what what, what no punch did you pull, it. Kyle? Ask no, Slipcast no one. Which what punch did you just pull? Nomad wants to know: Can we get a Sloop Pick standing update? Specifically, where is Jared currently sitting at? Where are uh, you sitting at, Jared? In my basement. <laughs> yeah, that's where you're at in, in the. Um, <laughs> In the rankings there. <laughs> no, I, I meant I'm sitting in my basement right now. The basement of my house. I didn't do it too bad. Um, we were I, tied going into the week. How, how did we do in the slew picks this week? I went five for two. And me? I went five for two this week, and then you went four for three. So you're one game ahead of me. I am one game ahead of you. I am tied so, for fifth with Austin. I'm so tied for fifth. No, no, Kyle, you're first and I'm second. Okay. And and the world has been corrected. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Some other questions from Nomad here. Why would anyone in the media describe TCU TCU's win as an upset? They were an undefeated number four team playing a three loss number eight team. Uh, because Texas has more famous uniforms, and to be fair, Vegas had them like plus seven, seven and a half. Eight. Ugh, yeah, and and I think I think so. From a Vegas standpoint, that, it was an upset, one, right? Who, who picked who picked Texas? Anybody picked Texas there? I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna call you out if you picked Texas. Oh, there's a couple of people. Uh, name and shame, Chad, Kyle. Name and shame. Chad Duncan. Uh oh, Matt and Sun Card. Sun Card. Sun Card. He was he was our guest picker too. 
that loss will be record. That loss has yeah. been recorded and uploaded but to YouTube Sun card for the rest one, of humanity. Sun card went one for six. That, that, that is not how you perform when the spotlight is on you. Sun Ooh. card. When the sun is shining on you, that, that, that is not how you. <sighs> yeah. All right. Uh, does Jimbo get fired before the end of the season? No. His contract is fully guaranteed. Um, they, no. All right. And but, last but question. I just want to, yeah, it's like 80, well, 80 million remaining. And I think it's actually more than that. Yeah. It's but that's huge. how much is remaining on his deal. Now they could like, yeah. it's not necessarily like a buyout buyout. They could set up a deal where they, you know, pay him $8 million a year over the next 10 years or whatever the numbers actually are. Cause I'm not sure if it's eight mil 80 million or not, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's yeah. all right. And last question here, we talked a little bit about this already. Does TCU deserve to be ranked higher than Michigan based on strength of record, uh, strength, strength of record. And we already had that. that. We already had that argument. Um, Yep. No, we're because gonna, eye test matters and how you win either. matters. All right. And that's it. That is all the questions. And we're right on time. Jared, you got anything else and anything else before we wrap it up? Just want to encourage everyone to check out our Patreon page. Um, I do. Hold on. Um, Kyle, can you, can you, hey, Kyle, you want to do some plugs for me real quick while I look something up? Do some plugs yeah sure so um hit up um be sure to check out um everything we have over at uh, the sloopcast.com there you can find everything that you need to related to uh your favorite uh, duo buckeye podcasters there you get yeah. there you can uh you oh, can when did tony and tom get a when did tony and tom get a <laughs> but your, your second favorite your second favorite <laughs> uh there you can you can um you can uh, get to our YouTube channel, our um, our Instagram, our podcast channel, our merch store. We we have both the Sloopcast merch store and our seventy seventy one merch store. Some uh, great merchandise uh, there. You can uh, help support uh, your uh, favorite Sloopcast uh, podcasters here. Um, but yeah, uh, again, that's uh, the Sloopcast .com and you can find all of the links in there. Um, to get you going though all right and i just i wanted to i wanted to look and, him up and don't forget I, yeah yep and austin austin remind me and don't forget uh discord dot this com where we uh we have a lot of fun that all weekend and all week talk about buckeyes and shenanigans and and all that fun stuff and if you like us so much you can get into our um our sloop cats only section which is our Patron section. If you like it so much, speaking, it's only as little as three dollars a month. Speaking of, we have a new patron uh, as of uh, two days ago as we record this. So I'm going to say thank you to Jim. Jim, I don't know if you want me saying you have a unique last name, so I don't want to like totally out you if you don't want me to do that. But I just want to thank Jim for signing up over at uh, Sloopcast or excuse me, Patreon. The Sloopcast. Com. Um, I know I I almost never say my second name out loud. Cause it's super unique. So just didn't want to, didn't want to totally out you, Jim. Yeah. That's it might, it's not, it's not, it's not that Jim based unless, unless of course he's using, <laughs> unless of course he's using a different last name on Patreon, which is possible. All right. Um, thanks for doing all the plugs, Kyle. Um, does You're that welcome. mean I do Jared's corner or are you still going to do Kyle's corner? Ugh. Do you have anything no, else to talk about? No, no, no. I did not prepare a damn thing. Uh, I can Basketball? We talk about Justin. Oh, Justin Fields had a big day today. Oh, Basketball yes. has yeah. started. You have you have some things. You have some things. Um, Justin Fields needs help. He he needs he needs other players on his on his team. There he. What did he end up? He had he had another decent game. Uh, he had he broke yeah, his single three, game record for rushing yards by a quarterback. 
Didn't he just set the record last week? He had he had over three hundreds of three hundred total yards of offense and four total touchdowns. That's insane. I don't running like that shortens your career. Chicago help him out. I mean, they're trying. They just went and got. Uh, a wide receiver from Pittsburgh. So like they're, they're, they're trying. No, they're, he, it's he, got he Claypool. Break, no, he, he broke, he broke um, most rushing yards in like, in like consecutive weeks or in like oh. three weeks combined or something like that. Cause last week he ran for 178 yards this week. He ran 147. Yeah. That, that was funny where, so one drive, he throws a pick six to former teammate Akuda. So Akuda got, uh, got a pick six. The next drive, field fields run for like a sixty some yard, sixty seven yard uh, touchdown run. That next drive, I thought it was, I thought it was kind of a turn of events there that Justin yeah. Fields had. A little, little bit of revenge never hurt anybody. That's that's the yep. that is the least true thing I've ever said. It, and when he ran that sixty seven <laughs> yard touchdown, the last player that he beat who dove for his legs at the two yard line was a Cuda. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I was about to say, maybe it's justice, but no, it's just revenge. Um, you hate to see Buckeye and Buckeye crime, but you like to see Buckeye succeed. It's, 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 I, I, have, I, have, I have no idea. Kyle, we're at the end of the second episode, which means my brain has turned to mush and I think it's time to end. I agree. <laughs> okay. I just, I, you, you get to the end of the second episode and I don't even know what the hell I'm saying half the time. So instead of continuing to talk, I'll just say tonight's ending music is playing to vapors, Columbus based band. They're amazing. Go check them out. They play live all over the city. Um, again, if you're listening to the audio version of this, just stay right where you are. The song's coming. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, we can't play music on YouTube, but you can, you can check out the link that I will provide in the show notes. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Playing Two Vapors.